Hello, John here again, uh, here with another video, uh, video. This is Tutorial 20 and we're going to do a deep dive into input, the input kernel jump vectors for the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. The internal jump vectors we're going to be messing around with are the CRN, CR, CHR in jump vector, the open jump vector, set name, close, uh, channel in, set logical file system and clear channel. The character in jump vector allows you to get a character from the input channel. The jump address for this is FSCF which is a vector uh, address of 0324. This returns a the character in the accumulator. To use this you need to have opened the channel and set the channel to be an input channel. Um, it does uh, come back with some uh, errors which is under the read ST and if no channel is set it assumes that the keyboard is the input channel. Setting the channel to be an input or FFC6 allows it basically sets up that the channel that you've just created will then be defined as an input channel. So whatever you've got the open file at the time that will be defined as an input channel. So we need to do that after the open which is the prerequisite for this routine. Of course the, you need to do the open which is FFC0 and this opens the channel for whatever uh, stream you want, so either input or output. At this moment in time when you open the file, the, open the logical file, it doesn't know whether it's an input or an output until you tell it. But before you can open it, you've got to set the logical file, uh, logical, uh, file system and you've got to set the name of the file. Set it up the logical file, jump back to FFBA, allows you to set up that file so you will be set, you'll be uh, specifying the logical file number, the secondary address and the device address. This must be done because you will be communicating via the file number, the logical file number. Setting the file name, well uh, this is obvious because if you're going to be creating files or reading from files off of uh, 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 media then these files will have a name so you need to uh, set the name of the file you want to either save to or or uh, read from and in this case we'll be reading from. Clear the channel this basically puts the all the channel configuration back into default so once when because we're doing an input once we do clear the input output channel that will default the input back to the keyboard and then close a file and this is required to close off the file because you don't want to keep it open There's no, the, the, the 64 doesn't have an infinite number of file numbers it only has 255 and if you have them open that's taking up memory space as well and eventually can run out of memory so what I'm going to do now is with these um, jump vectors we are going to import data from the default which will be the keyboard from the tape and so the files that I created on the output that will read back and see if we can store and see them and also from the disk so here we are so uh, this is a uh, CBM studio and what we've got here is um, set up all the uh, jump vectors that we're going to be using. We've got a couple more and then these are the three routines we're going to do. So at the moment they're rammed out. So we're going to input from default, input from tape and input from disk. This is the file name we're going to be using for the tape. Um, this is the file name that we're going to be using for the disk and if you remember on the output one we had to put right there well this time because we're inputting it's got to be a read so we have to set it to read and then this is where we're going to put what we're reading back so in this area here we're going to we're going to put the data we get back into that point so input from default which is just basically 
inputting uh, running the input string routine and then return back to uh, the Commodore 64 from tape first thing we do is we set up the logical file number uh, the file system so we're going to use logical file number one uh, use it in of course we're transferring the accumulator into X um, because 1 is the, t is the uh, tape device number and we're setting the secondary address to 0 now when we did the write we set it to 255 because anything above uh, 0 was safe so we're going to set this to load and, th and then we're going to run set the file logical file system then we're going to load the file name which is 8 characters and with the low and high, by high bytes of that and then set the name then we're going to open the file load the file number and then set that as the input channel and then we're going to use the input from default routine just to prove that once you've got a channel set up even, use, even using the input from default it will actually read from that uh, file that device then we're going to clear the channels to tidy everything up and then clear uh, then close the uh, logical file number and we're going to do the exact same thing from disk. So at this time it's going to be logical file number 8. Transfer that into X because the disk is going to be 8. Set that up. You've seen the, the file name with the comma sequential comma read. Set the name up. Open it up. Then set logical file number to be the input channel. Then we're going to basically input from the default. Clear the channel and close it up and then the input string routine is this and basically what we're going to do, we're going to uh, make x in uh, 0 because we're going to loop round and x is going to be the looper then we're going to jet, jump to E112 and E112 is a routine in the Commodore 64 that allows you to do the input so it, that inputs a character from the the current input channel. We're going to compare it with 15 so if it's got a carriage return if it's got a carriage return we're going to jump straight out of it and say we've read the line if it hasn't then we're going to store it in that test text that we've got um, set up increment x is it greater than 89 no it isn't then go back round and loop and if it is then jump straight back out and that's how we're going to do it so First thing, we're going to unrem the the jumps. So we're going to jump. We're going to input from default. So we're going to run this. There we go. And we're going to start it up. And now because it's the default, um, <coughs> because it, we've, we're just inputting from the default channel, the default channel is the keyboard. So it's just, it's waiting for me to type something in. So here we go. So this is tutorial 12. Oh, no, it's not 12, it's 20. Um, it's waiting for me to press carriage return for it to finish. So I'll press enter now. There you go. Now if we look in the monitor and fire up the memory. Now I'm looking here and it says test text. So here. Whoops. Here. It says test text is, is 901E. So that's what we're going to look for. Come a bit too far. Go back. 901E 1A There we go, so there we go So there's the start of it This this is Tutorial 20 So that's taken what I've typed in from the keyboard because that was the default channel and stored it in that memory locations using our input routine so that's the default channel. So what I will do is I'll show you what it does for the tape. 
So we're going to rem out that and activate the tape. Now in the previous video I created some files on both tape and disc by outputting some text to the tape and to the disc. So in this particular case we're going to read back what I outputted. So let's fire up and we're going to attach the tape, tape image. There it is. And there's the file on that tape. And so I'm going to do, do, just do the same thing in there. 4 SYS 496 star 9. This should, there you go, set play. So I'm going to tell it to start. So this is now going to try and find the John test file. So we should, it should pop up back saying it's found it. There we go. And then it's going to read the text from that file back into the um, area that I've allocated. So hopefully this is not going to take too long. There we go. So if we look at the memory now. So we're looking for 901E. Yeah, one eight. So, so it's saying this is to test the output jump vectors. There you go. And that's what we stored in the file when we did the previous video. So I'll close this down, and now we'll run the disk one just to see if that one works. So we'll fire it up. Yes, thank you. And we will attach the disk image with the file on, which I think is that one. Yes, there it is. So we attach it and we do it again. SYS 496 star 9. Done. Straight away. Easy. Right, so we'll go back in the monitor, go into the memory, and 901E is what we're looking for. gone too past it. So 901E, so here you go. So here we go, 901E. This is to test the output jump vectors. There you go. And that is what was saved in that file on the disk. So in the previous two videos I've shown you how to output to a file on or in, in, in the, the output one I we output it to the screen, we output it to a printer, we output it to a, the tape file and we output it to a, a disk file. This I've now shown you how to input from those devices. So we've shown you how to input from the keyboard, shown you how to input from a tape and shown you how to input from the disk. And of course you can't input from a printer because it's only an output device. So I'm hoping this will help you guys understand how to do um, file input output with um, the devices on the 64. That because I don't, I've not seen anywhere where how uh, people have shown you how to do this. So hopefully this is going to be this has been interesting for you guys. So with that. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you like the video, click like. If you don't, well, you might as well click on like. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Ta for now. Bye.